Right now, we are living in perhaps one of the most pivotal points in Arvi's history. And still, many artists seem to just ignore this fact. Like this AI tool that helps you improve your work exactly in the place of your 3D rendered models, without changing the shape of this. How many 3D artists reuse it in their work? This time, I show you the next AI tool that I recommend for Arvis, Magnific AI. And by the way, they do not sponsor this video. So we can upload the image here. As Magnific AI is a tool for high-res upscaling, we can scale the image up by different factors. Think about it. Images like this take quite a while to render, as lots of things going on here. Many polygons from high-quality plants got raised fog, transfluency effect, reflective materials and high-res textures. It all adds to a longer rendering time. Rendering times are often the issue for artists with not good enough computers. Now, with the use of Magnific AI, for example, this problem can be solved. Going back to the Tools option, the most we can choose is 16 times. However, I have an error as the biggest image size we can get is 10K. What I recommend here to do is to scale down your image to lower resolution to be able to get 10K after scaling. The best results I got when I scale images up 4 times. With a 2 times scale factor, the outputs were less realistic and looked more like a render. The optimized for option is very important as depending on what we choose, we'll get quite a different result. These are the styles of the generated image. Depending on the effect you want to get, you can choose different type. Here you can see the comparison between films and photography and nature and landscapes as an example. You can notice that the difference is huge. That's why it's necessary to choose the right option. You can also type prompt to guide the tool to do specific things. I didn't use it here as it was not necessary though. Anyway, you can play with that. Next, we have some parameters that we can adjust to get various effects. The higher the creativity value, the further away from the original image the output will be. HDR, on another hand, increases definition and detail. The higher the resembles value, the closer to the original image the generation will be. And finally, the fractality controls the strength of the prompt. Here, we can choose the upscale engine that will be used to upscale your image. Default is automatic, and I would use that. Now, let me give you a couple of examples with different parameters to show you how it influenced the output. So here, for instance, I use nature and landscapes, with all the parameters values equal to zero. This is a before and after. You can see that some things are not interpreted the way they should be. Definitely, the wooden material doesn't look like an improvement of the original one, but rather something different. Look at the creeper structure. It's not as it should be. Here, there is a small waterfall. We don't expect that for sure. And also, the position of the river is not in the right place. It didn't do well with the fog either. We have some mountains there, but in terms of the greenery, it's fantastic. Look at this park, so natural. The same for the plants. The effect is so great. It looks like a photo. Now let's fix the issues by changing the settings. Here, I wanted to stay closer to the original image, so I decrease the creativity value and I increase resemblance. You can see that now it interprets the river correctly. It still looks impressively good just closer to the original landscape. You can notice that the generated objects are exactly in the place of the original ones, which is awesome. Now let me compare the images in Photoshop so you can see the difference between the visualization and the upscaled image. This is my low-res render. Here is the generated image. To have an honest comparison, I show you my high-res render. Now, the difference is not as huge, but still, generated image is more realistic, especially with the greenery. You would never get as much realism with 3D models, at least with the technology we have right now. You can see that the models are very similar in terms of the position and style. They just look more like photo. As I told you, I wouldn't use the same image for the architecture, so I just used my high-res image and masked in that area. I even decided to leave the windows as they look very nice on the generated image. We could spend more time on the mask, but I just wanted to show you the process. It still looks very good. The idea is to leave everything what looks better and help the image. So here will be a before and after. Nice, isn't it? Now, to prove you as close everything is to the original placement, let me show you the white render. You can see that there is no randomness here. Everything is more or less where it should be. I think that a negative approach may be because of a misunderstanding of a concept of what AI tools are for. 
These AI tools are not to replace architectural visualizations, but rather to enhance the effect we can get with the technology we have now within reasonable timeframes. So the idea is to use AI tools to help you with achieving realism in the places of your image that are the hardest to get. I hope you can see now what I mean by full control over the result. Before we jump to the next part of the video, I'd like to share with you some news. We just started designing for the new, free AI course that will start soon. Yes, it's free, and it will teach you how to use AI tools to your advantage. You just need to download the app, sign up, and join the course. If you're interested in this tool and how to use it in your work, in the course we'll show you the step-by-step -step example. Here, the process will be more complex. We used six different generated images and blended all of them with the original visualization. As I said before, everything is as I wanted, with no random results. I have full control. Sounds good? Sign up now. Ok, now let me show you how it works with interiors. Here, I use films and photography, and I didn't change any parameters value. It works well with architecture details. There are more changes in materials, for instance, but remember, I didn't change the parameters to be closer to the original image. The plants could be better though, and for that I used nature and landscapes. However, with these settings, there are many issues, for example with the walls. So in the next step, I gave a bit less freedom to the tool. And look at the result. The plants look similar, but the other issues are fixed. You can see that it requires a bit of testing, but you can easily get the desired effect. But look at the plants. The effect is so good. Let me show you the whole process for that image. Here is the low-res image I created. Here is the original high-res. Next, you can see one of the generated images from Magnific AI. But you can notice some issues that wouldn't be acceptable for the final image. So I use different parts of the original and generated image to compose the best result. You would have to decide what can be changed and what has to stay as original, but masking, especially at the final stage, is not a big deal. We would have to get rid of obvious mistakes, like this one for instance. Or look at the lounge chair. It doesn't look too close to the original one, so if it's important part of the design, we have to mask it out. You may think that you don't have to be as good as an artist as before anymore. Well, I would argue with that. Still, the base image has to be very good to achieve a nice result. It has to be well composed, well lit, and balanced in terms of the colors. You still need a visualization that will be as photorealistic as possible, as otherwise you would have to add more creativity to the tool, which causes more unexpected mistakes. Let's move to the next example. Here, the living room image. I don't like how the stone wall came out. It's too sharp. It doesn't work well with detail objects like these vases either. But look at the leather material on another hand. It's not a huge difference, but enough to make it way more realistic. So here, I would again take the generated image and use the parts I think work great and use the original render as a base. I would definitely add the generated leather material, but I would mask out the vases for example. But we don't have to add it everywhere, perhaps only on the leather seams. The idea is to avoid changing it too far from the original design. I like how the armchair details works in the back. Similarly here, look how great the fabric material on the sofa looks. Incredible. Now let's talk about one more important thing, people. It works just incredible. By the way, here I use the 3D model of myself for testing. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the corner and in the description below the video. The face details, hair, the fabric materials, you cannot really compare this tool, it's like a different level. I highly recommend using the tool for 3D people. These are typically the weakest parts of any visualization, so worth improving it. So many details. It wouldn't be a problem to get people close to the camera anymore. I tested the various styles. Portrait seems to make the person look more similar to the original model, but the effect is very soft in comparison to the previous one, there is less detail especially if you look at the hair or facial imperfections. But for this example, it didn't turn out well. I did it earlier with the use of stable diffusion, which is free, and I got better results. If you haven't watched it yet, then you'll find a link in the corner and in the description. Let's talk more about mistakes I found out during testing. 
For instance, it didn't came up well with the motion blur effect. Giving the tool too much control is not a good choice for our type of work. It just makes very weird outputs and not realistic at all. Also, in most cases, when there is a fog in the image, the tool gets lost and comes out with weird solutions. I get very strange cars in this example. The motion blur effect disappeared completely here. It doesn't read the depth of field effect either. It removes it. Even though I didn't give too much freedom to the tool, the results here were… well, let's say not appropriate. I'm not sure how it came up with that. You can see it's not perfect in each case, but I think it's worth spending some extra time to play around with this and improve your visualizations, especially at things like greenery and people. I think it's worth the effort. If you want to learn more about AI tools you can use in your work, join our free AI course. You can also stay here on YouTube and watch more videos like this one. Bye-bye!